1962, Penn Station looked like this. And this. Building was 52 years old in 1962. As today, hundreds of thousands of people passed through there, perhaps having a different experience than the people passing through Penn Station today. Uh, a year later, all that Beaux-Arts magnificence was rubble, and it made way for this. Uh, in 1960, sure, hiss. In 1963, <laughs> in 1963, after the station was demolished, a New York Times editorial said, any city gets what it admires, will pay for, and ultimately deserves. Even when we had Penn Station, we couldn't afford to keep it clean. We want and deserve tin can architecture in a tin horn culture. And we will probably be judged not by the monuments we build, but by those we have destroyed. So the question is, 50 years later, not, not even quite 50 years later, what do we deserve? The destruction of Penn Station was uh, a final straw, really, that turned the idea of urban preservation uh, into a mainstream movement that never stopped gaining traction. It was just two years after the, the demolition of Penn Station that the um, New York City Landmarks Commission was created, which was, of course, then promptly instrumental in saving Grand Central Terminal from uh, obliteration. Uh, and rather quickly, pre the preservation of great old buildings became the default assumption, not just in New York City, but nationally and globally. Today we're going to talk about the legacy of all that and look at New York and the world as it is today. I have some fantastic companions up here to t for this exploration. Bonnie Burnham is president of the World Monuments Fund and has led its historic preservation work all over the world since 1985. They have projects on every continent, even Antarctica. I was happy to discover, um, from ancient archaeological sites to 20th century modernist mo masterworks. Paul Goldberger uh, became the architecture critic for the New York Times when he was literally a child, uh, <laughs> shortly after his graduation from Yale. And he's been writing about buildings and cities ever since, most recently for The New Yorker and now for Vanity Fair. And in many books, including Building Up and Tearing Down, Reflections on the Age of Architecture. And David Money is a professor of architecture at the College of Design at the University of Kentucky, and he, f following 14 years there as the dean of the architecture school, where he, among other things, led the successful effort to have the Bluegrass region added to the World Monument Fund Watch list, and started a new graduate program in historic preservation. These days he lives about half the time in New York City, and the rest of the time travels around the world exploring how cities do and don't work. <laughs> 